Hi, it's Chris Watkin here, and I'm with Simon Ledbetter, who used to be Global Chief of Marketing for Knight Frank, and now has joined Keller Williams as their Chief uh, Marketing Guy. Simon, what are the pros and cons of the self-employed model? Talk to me. I think there's several pros and probably a couple of big cons. Um, I think the joy of being self-employed is your own boss. So in any industry, if you're self-employed, you're working for yourself. So the motivation is really there. You can choose to work as long as you want. You can work, choose to work how you want. You can take advantage of whichever organization you're part of and use their facilities or not. Okay. You're essentially your own boss. And that's an enormous amount of flexibility for different types of people. The con is you're self-employed. So there's no fixed salary. There's no guarantee that you will earn money because you've got to essentially earn your own income and define what the income will be. The challenge with that is everyone has monthly commitments, people have obligations, and they need to know that they're able to fit them. So it's a, it's a, it's a risk, and you need to be willing to entertain that risk. But in this industry specifically, I think property specifically, um, the risks are smaller, say, than some other self-employed models. Do you think it... Do you think it's the fears that are holding people back more over than the frustrations of trying to get out of their job that they don't like? I think fear is the biggest driver in most people's decisions. I think people worry about not having that cheque arrive on payday every month and it's I have a mortgage to pay, I have things I need to fund and what do I do in the month it doesn't happen? And the market's cyclical so it goes up and it goes down so in a corporate environment you can sort of more rely on getting a monthly salary, but your job is at, is at risk should the business not be doing well. In a self-employed model, the market's cyclical, so you can work a lot harder and therefore get more market share when the market's in a downturn and maybe not have to do so much in a, an upturn. Um, but again, you don't have the guarantee that your bank's going to get a big check arriving every month and you need to be comfortable that you have the ability to weather the storms. You save money, for example. You don't just spend everything you make, you hold reserves. You think like a business person. Do you think most people, I hate to use the phrase, good enough for self-employed agency? I absolutely believe it's not for everybody. I genuinely believe that you have to have a certain mindset. I mean, I run my own business within Keller Williams UK. It's the fourth business that I've run. I'm probably unemployable because um, I like running my own businesses and doing things my way. I like the risk. I think some people who couldn't sleep at night and it really badly affected them, the fact that they don't know the future. I think... How did you get over your first initial fear when you, you know, went alone? I think for some people it's sort of, it's natural, it, com it comes more easily to some people. Some people have that ability to take risks. When I had a, a great job, I was, I was voted most likely to become a second-hand car salesman at school. I worked auto trader, so I had 350,000 cars on my forecourt, so I had it on an epic scale, so I did become a second-hand car salesman, and I gave it all up to start a business, because I had a real passion in terms of, I felt the way that marketing agencies were doing stuff wasn't as good as it could be, and I had a different model. I found a great business partner, a brilliant sales guy, um, and we went out and we built that business from having you know a corporate salary income to having none, but in that, the big factor in helping me out the first time was a great business partner. I mean, what piece of advice, apart from getting a great business partner, because they do actually say going to business with a business partner should be taken on with the same gravitas as get marrying someone? It's your second or your first partner. It's your spouse. You know, you will live and breathe their lives and they need to trust them implicitly because you're doing something together. Now, if you don't necessarily want to go as far as having a business partner, having some fantastic mentors or coaches you know, people who will hold your hand. It's not easy. You know, I was just, my business partner, who it was his second or third business when we went into business together, I remember he said, you'll have one of three dreams when you start a business. You'll feel like you're falling off a tower block, being dragged by a train, or being run over by cars. And it's that feeling of, I don't have stability anymore. And inevitably, I had the falling off a tower block dream very shortly after. It's like, I've lost control. And, and how, did, how did you get over that? Um, I put the hours in, I gave it my life, and I worked hard, we built a brilliant business, we talked to lots and lots of people, we allowed ourselves to fail, um, we got things wrong. Um, How did it feel when you did fail? Um, 
Well, I like the phrase that I've heard often recently is you win or le learn. So you don't ever lose as long as you're willing to learn the lesson of your failure. And it's not a catastrophic failure. I mean, I've told the story to others that my first business bought me my first house. My third business cost me everything. So I approached bankruptcy and that failure taught me more than the success, which was hard, but a lot easier than the I mean, failure. How did you feel at the time when you lost everything? Uh, devastated. I'd let my family down. I'd let my kids down, my wife, uh, my broader family had helped us out. Um, I had built a great reputation with a business that had gone really quite big, quite fast, but I'd outgrown my own capabilities. I didn't have a mentor that I needed and the money just didn't come in in the way it needed to. Was it, was it the losing of the money that hurt the most or the shame or what you thought was the shame of losing it to your people that knew you looked up to you? I felt embarrassed that I had let them down, that they had backed me all the way to take this risk and I had let them down. And I, shame, a very powerful emotion, shame. And the fact that it was quite public um, in the sense that people knew I'd gone down and I couldn't hide. I sort of went off the grid for a bit, um, licked my wounds. But you know, I, I'm not putting myself in the same league as these people, but all the greatest business people ever have had significant failures. You know, Ford was bankrupt five times before he got Ford going. Um, Abraham Lincoln, how many times did he try to be elected before he became one of the greatest presidents America's ever had? You just go through the list of all the great successes in business and they failed more than they succeeded. But the only real failure ever is giving up. And I licked my wounds. I actually got more of a corporate life. You know, I worked at Countrywide and Knight Frank and I really fell in love with property. Um, but I always had it in myself is, if I can find the right place, I would love to do my own business again, but I'm only gonna do it this time with someone, because I've done it by myself and that was quite ruinous. Also, it's got to be the right place, and I ummed and ahed for so long about where I'd go after my Frank. And what would you say to someone who's at the precipice of becoming a self-employed estate agent? I know obviously you're part of the Keller Williams team, but this is not a this is not a promo for Keller Williams. There's plenty. There's of many good there. players. What would you say with them actually making that first step? I think you've got to really do the homework, do your due diligence to really understand the business. Do you understand the way they work, and are you willing to learn? If you're going, I am the best estate agent that's ever existed, and I'm just going to go this way because I'll just get more cash. That's not how you start a brilliant business you need to be so open to learn things from other people who are more successful. Well, uh, uh, the, the adage I always use is, is that my, my wife is an excellent cook, but it doesn't make that, that she'll make a great restaurant owner. Exactly. You know, you can be very good at a thing in a certain context. You take that fish out of water, and the thing they are brilliant to have in that environment, they suddenly realize, mm -hmm. you're running your own business, you're not just doing property. Now, the advantage of doing it within another network of self-employed is they'll often provide a lot of the cures for the headaches of running businesses. But in reality, you are running your own business. You know, you're dealing with okay. payroll, you're dealing with legals, you're dealing with things okay. that- You're on your own, but you're not alone. Yes, you've got a friend. You've got a comforting arm yeah. around you to help you. I mean, you. My, my, my final piece of advice to, to, to anyone watching this is don't judge a self-employed model on the percentage that you, that you own. Uh, don't judge them on their brand. I think the big one has got to be, in my humble opinion, is who's going to make you accountable, who's going to be your mentor and guide, because that's what I think a good self-employed model looks at. And, and fundamentally, do you personally, looking at yourself in the mirror, do you have the worth ethic and playing the long game to win? Absolutely. Spot on. Thank you for your time today, son. Thank you, Chris.